Hey friends, my name is Bryce, and for the last year, I have been selling about 20 dozen eggs a week. Today in this video, I'm not eating my chickens because this is where it all begins. It begins with the chickens. And in this video, I'm going to show you guys how I got started, what my process was like, and how much money I actually made from selling eggs. So it all started with my family. Growing up, we had chickens. We, I've always been the one that was responsible for taking care of the chickens, making sure they had food, water, collecting the eggs, making sure that they were overall happy. I learned how to take care of the animal. I learned what their needs were, and I found a lot of joy doing it. However, one thing I started to notice was we started getting a lot of eggs in our fridge that we just weren't going through. I think we started, my family had about uh, 20 to 25 chickens, and we just did not go through that many eggs. And so, being the person that I am, I decided that I was going to try to start selling them on this corner of the street. And that's exactly how I started. I started selling my chicken eggs with a cardboard sign on the corner of the street. So in 2021, BK Farm was born. We started to increase our chicken flock. We ended up getting goats. And we started paying attention a lot more to our numbers. Come here. So once we started turning a profit on the farm, we put the money back into the farm to buy our refrigerator, egg cartons, labels, and any other material that we were needing at the time. I enjoyed agriculture and I really wanted to close the gap between consumers and farmers to bring them together and really help people know where their food is actually coming from. So the process that we used, and I already mentioned the fridge a couple times, is we had purchased a retail fridge off of the secondhand market and had used it to put the eggs inside and let our customers know, hey, we have eggs available. They would come pick up and pay at their own pace. But it was not always as simple as that. So yes, it was convenient. I didn't have to be around for my customers to come pick up eggs. All I had to do is make sure the fridge was stocked. They could come and go at any time they wanted. But there was a lot of issues that came along with this system that we had in place. One of the biggest issues that we ran into was I could not keep up with my customers. We, every time it seemed that we grow our flock, our customers would almost double. And I'd still constantly be turning customers away because I just didn't have any eggs to give them. This caused a problem because customers that would come on a regular basis and were always expecting their eggs to be there, would get there, grab their eggs, or grab eggs that were in the fridge, and those eggs may have been net for the person that was supposed to come yesterday that never did come yesterday, even though I told them that there was eggs available and ready for pickup. This caused a headache a lot of the time, to the point where I had to start putting like our customers' names on the boxes or on like sticky notes and sticking them on the paper, like, hey, so-and-so, this stack here is your eggs. So-and-so, this is your eggs. And if someone were to message me and say, hey, any eggs available? I'd be like, no, your eggs will be available on this day and they'll have your name on it. And that process eliminated the problem of having eggs being taken when they weren't supposed to for the most part, but still occasionally I had customers that would not have the full order they wanted or just didn't see any eggs in the fridge. Sometimes we have customers that would come in and they would take more eggs than what they originally ordered or asked for, or they would come in, take the eggs, and either, I don't know, forget to pay, or they just never paid. So we had eggs that were stolen from us, and customers would just take more than what they intend, originally wanted to take. When it came to washing the eggs, collecting the eggs, and packaging the eggs, getting them ready for sale, it was one of the most time-consuming parts of selling this quantity of eggs at a time or in as a small farmer i would often spend later hours into the night or earlier hours in the morning just washing eggs to be able to sell that week or even that day after getting so many customers and so many orders a week 
I actually started just to say, hey, we are no longer washing any of our eggs. This is how our eggs come. The price is still the same. However, we did have a couple of requests from a couple of customers that said, hey, I really just don't want my eggs dirty. Could you wash mine? And we let those ones slide through the gaps. I had some CSA programs that we delivered to that wanted those eggs to be clean, especially because they were using those to get to their customers. And so we still had a small portion of our orders that we had to wash, but it wasn't anywhere near 20 dozen every single week. Instead of having to focus on washing eggs and getting either yolk off or manure off or whatever it may be getting into our eggs, I spent more time trying to focus on keeping the egg boxes as clean as I could. You know, if an egg got cracked open or stepped on, let's get that yolk out of there, let's clean that up and replace the hay right as soon as possible. Now it sounds easy if you, know, if you were doing this full time and you had 100 chickens and all you had to do out there every couple hours was collect the eggs and you would have spotless eggs all the time. However, both my wife and I, we work full time jobs and sometimes we're not even getting home till 6 or 7 o'clock at night. So that was our process for selling our eggs and how we did it um, when we got to that large number and even when we were even when we were small, uh, we still used the fridge. It seemed to work for out for us. It seemed to work for us really well. What did I actually make when I was selling twenty dozen eggs a week? Let's do some big math. So this is the best room that I have with a white wall and okay lighting that doesn't actually echo. So I have my numbers here, my tablet that I'm referring to, so I can keep it all straight in my head. I'm going to post everything right here so you can see it as well. In 2023, we were able to sell a dozen eggs for five dollars a dozen in our five dollars a dozen in our area. And I was selling again about 20 dozen eggs a week, um, which would bring our total to roughly a hundred dollars every week. Our expenses that we had was mostly chicken feed, chicken supplements like oyster shells or vet rx which is a health supplement for chickens so if we take a hundred dollars a week times or for six months that would give us about twenty four hundred dollars across the six months we would have to buy four thousand pounds of feed every six months. So we're using six months as a base number. We did buy our feed from a local farm, a local mill, um, which greatly increased not only our egg production, but our chicken health and overall improved our flock. So the cost for the chicken food was our highest cost when it came to taking care of the chickens. And that was $1,200 every six months. We're going to round to $100 for our supplement feed, our vet medicine, as well as chicken tags or whatever miscellaneous supplies we may have purchased in the last year. That brings our total so far to about $1,300. This last year, we also purchased, we're able to cash flow and purchase some of our own egg cartons. Prior to this year, we've actually just been reusing clean egg cartons that our customers would bring back to us. Uh, but we were able to buy our own. We have started, started to label our egg cartons um, to be more official. And we didn't want to buy too much egg cartons, but we didn't want to buy a little bit amount to where the cost just didn't make it worth it. So the location where we bought it, the op best option for the quantity we were able to get for the best price was, I believe, 500 egg cartons for $200. One other thing that happened this year was our refrigerator that we had used to sell the eggs through had actually stopped freezing or had stopped working, it stopped staying cold. That was a big issue because we couldn't really sell our eggs without a new refrigerator. So I jumped on the secondhand market and started searching on Facebook Marketplace and whatever else I could find. 
and I came across the refrigerator that was a little bit smaller than what we originally started using, but it was only 150 bucks. Our total expenses came to $1,650 for the six months, which would give us a profit margin of about 650. However, that was only six months out of the entire year. It was the six months of our most prime time of selling eggs which is usually between April and September. So during the entire year, we're not getting a consistent 20 dozen eggs a week. During the early spring and late fall, our profit or the, our revenue and what we would spend to feed our chickens and take care of our chickens would actually break even. And in the winter months, we would dip into the negatives a little bit. So during the winter months, we were feeding our chickens still. We had to keep them alive. They had slowed down their laying. It was daylight hours weren't as long. The weather's cold. Their energy is going into keeping them warm. And so because we still had to feed them, weren't getting the same amount of eggs, we had to stop a couple of our contracts or uh, sales that we were doing. We had to slow down on sales. Customers were aware that chickens slowed down in the land during the winter and our profit or our revenue was a lot less. Some of our chickens would actually stop laying and we were still having to feed them. So it's about four winter months being into the negative or almost break even area, we would say we lost about $200 over the course of the year. Remember, this is big math. We're not getting into details on numbers. We're just giving you a general idea of what we spent and how much we made. So if we take the money that we put into our chickens during the winter months and we minus it from our profits, that would give us a, prof a new profit for the year of $450. We made $400 for an entire year to sell 20 dozen eggs a week during our prime time of selling eggs. This included our time to wash the eggs when we did, our time to collect the eggs, to take care of the chickens, to communicate with our customers, to go and get chicken feed, to care for sick chickens, to watch over our flock when predators came. Yes, we do have raccoons in this area. We have predators throughout the year on the side of working full-time jobs. We didn't even really talk about the risk of losing a chicken or chickens getting sick, sick, chickens molting, all of these things can affect how much money we can actually make because it affects how many eggs we're getting per day and per week and per month. After we figure out our profit, we decide, okay, what do we want to put our money into on the farm? Do we want to pocket it for ourselves or do we want to keep growing? Now, we wanted to keep growing. We would be getting more chickens to grow our flock or other items that may have made our life easier. We even consider purchasing our egg washing machine, but there was really nothing that would justify the price for me to spend that much money to get an egg washing machine. This year, however, with our profits and with the help of the profits from selling our flock and moving, we were able to purchase our livestock or horse trailer that we'll be using on our farm. So all the money that we've made, whether it be from selling the eggs or selling the chickens, has gone right back into the farm to again grow our farm to what we are trying to make it to be. At the end of the year, after all that work and not putting a single dime into my own pocket, was it worth it? Would I do it again? The answer is yes. I enjoy agriculture and I really want to continue to close the gap between our cons customers, consumers, and our farms in the area. To be able to bring them together and help customers and our consumers know where exactly their food came from and the process and the work that gets put behind to keep our families fed. We don't farm for profit. We farm because it's something that we enjoy. There is nothing more satisfying 
than being on a farm and knowing that this is where my food came from. I hope this video helps you see what it takes to not only raise chickens and to sell eggs, but I hope you recognize the amount of work that goes into it for as little pay as you get. We appreciate you guys watching our videos. We would encourage you if you enjoy this content or other content we have up to subscribe and let me know if you like this content by giving it a thumbs up or if you really did not like it, please give it a thumbs down so I know what not to make for my future videos. By doing so, you are supporting our farm and you are supporting local agriculture in your area. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.